Welcome to another installment of the Mastercam Studio at Prototech. This exclusive video series features the exceptional functionality found only within Mastercam, the number one most widely used cam software in the world. Here's the topic of today's video. Today we're going to take a 3D toolpath and show you how you can turn this into a five axis toolpath by a simple click in the parameters. Let's go to my screen and take a look. So on my screen, I have this part here. And if I kind of hide my stock model, you'll see that this is a full 3D part. Uh, we got a lot of different uh, angles on this part and a lot of different features. So what I did is I roughed this out. And at this stage here, we are essentially ready for our finish operation. So let's go ahead and take a look at my finish operation. Now in this case here, I did an equal scallop tool path. And if we go ahead and take a look at this and let this run, we'll see that we have potential issues going on with this tool path. So if we go to a right hand view and I work this around, you'll notice right off the bat that my holder is now inside of my part. Now the only way around this is to start to push out our tool from the tool holder, which in a lot of cases, we'll lose rigidity with that style of setup and we can potentially see some chatter. So as always, the more we can choke our tool up inside the tool holder, uh, the better off we'll be with surface finish. So in this case here, like I said, my only way around this in a, a true three axis machine would be to use a longer tool. So if you do have a five axis machine, um, now you can take these three axis programs and now you can convert them right to five axis tool pass right inside the parameters, which a lot of people don't know. So back inside of this tool path here of this equal scallop tool path, specifically in the holder tab here, uh, you're gonna see collision checking. So if I go ahead and turn this collision checking on, you'll see that it shows your current holder on there, your current projection, and it gives you two options trim to avoid gouge, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or tilt to avoid gouge. Now, anytime we are tilting to avoid gouge, we have to have a multi-axis machine so the tool can tip out of the way of that collision. You can set some parameters here of a max tilt angle, a shank clearance, a holder clearance, and also there is a switch here for clearance on the bottom of the holder. So if I go ahead and green check, we will let this regenerate, and we're going to see the difference now of what we get with a tool path automatically by essentially not really doing anything other than turning on that one switch in the tool path. So as this crunches here, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna take a look at another option also. So the other option here is trim and relink. Now trim and relink works the same way. Same holder page we can go into, and instead of tilting to avoid gouge, maybe I'm going to trim to avoid gouge. Now in the situation here where this one would be used, would be you don't have a five axis machine, but you want to machine as much as you can with the stick out out of your holder that you have. And what you'll see here is you're going to see that it trims back the tool path. So in this case here for trimming to avoid gouge, it could not put cuts in the center section here where we're kind of seeing this missing. It had to start trimming the cuts back as it worked up. So it was doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, and you know, in that case there, obviously we're not going to finish the whole thing out, but maybe we can get a good majority of it out of there and then come back in with that longer uh, tool that's sticking out of the holder. Now let's go back to our other tool path we talked about initially. Back to this one here where we were tilting to avoid gouge. Now we're gonna see different behavior on this one. So once again, if I go to my right hand view here, and if I go ahead and back plot this, now when we come down, you're gonna notice when we get around this backside here that my holder is now tilting out of the way. Now this is gonna be your five axis motion that I was talking about to avoid that gouge. Taking that three axis program and essentially turning into a complex five axis program by essentially not doing anything, making it very easy for the end user to control their cuts. So as you can see by these two options in the parameters and the holder page specifically, uh, you can easily start to trim them collisions out of your tool pass. And we'll see you next time.